So while we're on the, we kind of mentioned the credit card debt, while we're on the debt conversation, let's talk about the United States debt. Uh, on August 1st, as many people in the room probably know, Fitch Ratings downgraded its rating for the U.S. from AAA to AA+. Now, what does that really mean, and, and what impact does it have on the near term and maybe even the long term? So three main rating agencies in the U.S., uh, S&P, they drowned graded our debt in 2011. Uh, the, then you have Fitch, and they finally got the memo. <laughs> Took them a few years. <laughs> and you have Moody's. Those are your three main rating agencies. I think to answer that question, you have to go back, student history, 1969, Ministry of Finance in France, the exorbitant privilege of the U.S., that, that phrase, exorbitant privilege, anybody remember that? That was in reference to the incredible stability of dollar markets, U.S. dollar, our currency. He was getting at what I think is, is protecting the economy from, you know, feel, I guess, uh, paying the bills, if, as it were, from the Fitch downgrade. As long as dollar markets remain stable and, and the majority of how things are traded in the world, right, global markets, we have this exorbitant privilege uh, of being able to continue to issue debt <laughs> and, and get away with um, rates either going really, really high or a U.S. dollar really devaluating. Think about the last couple of weeks, Fitch downgraded. What happened to the dollar? Actually went up. Mm. Uh, dollars had a, a, a great run the last uh, even couple of weeks as the markets have been kind of choppy. Uh, the point is that I think you, you go back and you say, okay, wh philosophically, you know, where, where is this? Well, it's such a relative game. Kind of like the story, you know, you go, so I love hiking and camping on the Appalachian Trail, which runs, starts in Georgia, runs along the border of Tennessee and North Carolina. Um, and we've, we've seen black bear on our hikes. But as long as you're faster than your hiking partner, you're okay. <laughs> that relative game matters in the, in the economy too. And I think that's where... Um, I think that that's where it's so important to think, okay, where are we relative to Europe? Where are we relative to Asia? Where are we relative to Argentina, <laughs> Latin America? The U.S., yes, we're the, maybe the prettiest pig in the slop, but at least we're the prettiest one. <laughs> that gives us a little bit of, um, I guess you could say borrowed time, where the Fitch rating is, is kind of irrelevant. You know, markets sold off when S&P sure. downgraded in 2011, but... Two weeks, three, I guess it was three or four weeks later, you know, the markets hit new highs, right. even in 2011 after that downgrade. Same thing with Fitch. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a matter of remaining uh, true to who we are as a nation, because I think that keeps us in, in that, that privileged position. A lot to say there, too, yeah. but well, I'll, leave it, I'll yeah. leave it at that. I'm going to hang out on Fitch for just a second, because that group also hinted recently that it may be downgrading the credit rating of some of the 70 banks that it monitors. You know, we all remember the bank failures from the spring. Those, those made a lot of headlines too. So a question here, just do you believe our financial system is stable? Big question. Well, I hinted at it uh, with comparing today with where I was when I started my career in 04. Mm -hmm. So I'm not as tied to the trading floor today like I was in 04. But from what I know, from what I talk and hear from my colleagues, I think, I think it's very fair to say that this environment is nothing like the environment going into the great financial crisis. Uh, so I, I, would, I would answer the question saying, yes, I think, I think credit unions play an incredible role, uh, a positive role in providing, you know, stability in the banking system that we need. Regional banking, I, I'm, I'm a proponent of, of regional banking. 
Uh, I always feel sad when there's more, you know, takeovers and in, in becoming, you know, larger and larger. Uh, so, yeah, so the short answer is uh, we are much more stable today than we were, you know, a decade and a half ago. Uh, and I don't, I don't see, I don't see systemic risk like I did uh, in 04 and 05, 06. Um, my best, my best forecast probably as a, as a professional forecaster was leaving Bank of America the end of 06, <laughs> leaving that world. But yeah, I don't, I don't think, I'll, I'll tell one story here um, to illustrate uh, the stability of it all. When I was at B of A, I'll never forget this besides my CLO and CDO projects. You know, I, I'll never forget when one trader was yelling to my boss to pick up the blankety blank phone greenspan's on the line <laughs> and and no joke greenspan would call us because b of a had such a wide footprint on deposits and what was happening remittances to mexico for some reason greenspan really loved thinking about watching what we saw remittances coming going out of the united states same thing when i was at visa i was at visa during covid you know, central bankers are are talking to people in the industry all the time, saying, "Okay, tell us what you see because we don't know what's happening." <laughs> right? We have official government data, but I want to hear industry data. I want to mm. see industry data. Yeah. Um, that that information sharing happens twenty four seven, and when you kind of read the tea leaves, you think, "Okay, yeah, this we're we're in a state we're in a much more stable environment than we were." Um, 05, 06, 07.